homeowners, this is Bianca for another episode of MF Home TV. Today we figured since we're always talking about the sofa, how to decorate, how to arrange it, we thought why not talk about the history of the sofa and explain the different design styles. In this way, if you go out to shop for a sofa or if you want to have one customized, you already know the design and style principles. Am I right? Are you ready to go down history lane? This is common sofa types and design styles explained by me. <laughs> <laughs> We will start with the biggest sofa design, the sectional. A sectional modular sofa is a sofa that has sections or modules that can separate or arrange together. Sectionals were built in the Victorian era, the period of Queen Victoria's reign. Can be arranged in a number of different configurations. The most common are the L shape and the U shape like the Primo and Matteo. Second sofa is the camel back. The Cara sofa is a camel back type of sofa because it's got a hill or a hump that resembles a camel, hence also the name camel back. The camel back was popular in aristocratic families in the 18th century England. This type of sofa adds a traditional look to your living room, commonly placed between windows for a royal feel. One of the most distinct sofa types is the tuxedo. Example of this is the Malta sofa and the Diego sofa. You can immediately tell it's a tuxedo type of sofa when the arms and the backrest are connected and are of the same height, like a box. It got its name from the popular suit tuxedo because it is clean lined, formal and sleek, just like the suit. If you're into luxury and classic modernism, this sofa is perfect. The fourth sofa style is the Lawson. I think Mandela Foam has the Lawson design style in most of their sofas. Example of this is the Lindsay sofa and the Harriet sofa. The Lawson came into existence because of Thomas Lawson, but he's not the one who created the sofa as we might assume. The Lawson was actually customized for him. He liked the tuxedo style, but he wanted it to be more comfortable, so the designer decided to add the cushions. Two of the telltale characteristics of the Lawson sofa is one, the backrest is comprised of pillows. And two, the pillows are separate from the frame because some sofas like the English rolled arm has its back cushions attached to the frame. What we have next is the mid-century modern sofa. Perfect examples of this sofa is the daisy sofa and the cameros. The main characteristics of a mid-century modern sofa are the tough backs and seat cushions and cone-shaped solid wood legs that are higher than most sofas. Mid-century modern sofas are for homeowners that like to keep the room airy and light. It's usually found in Scandinavian design interiors. Next up is the chaise lounge. Chaise lounge means long chair in French. It is literally a long chair because it can sit only one person, but it's long enough that that person can rest their legs. The chaise lounge dates back to ancient Egypt and ancient Rome. Remember those movies where they carry Egyptian queens in a chaise lounge and also those Roman emperors lying in a chaise lounge getting fed some grapes? Yep, it's the same type of sofa. It is designed for personal comfort and commonly placed today in areas in the house for reading but hey you can be an Egyptian queen and Roman emperor if you want next one are sleeper sofas sleeper sofas make the most of a small space it doubles as a sofa and a bed in just a few adjustments it was popular and mass-produced for soldiers and camps back then Mandela foam has a range of sleeper sofas from futons to pull-out beds day beds and convertible sofas the first sleeper sofa type is the most common, the pull-out sofa bed. An example of this is the Stacy sofa bed. It is called a pull-out bed because you literally pull out the bed. Mm -hmm. 
next is the convertible sofa. An example of this is the Hamilton sofa bed and the Montreal. The difference between a pull-out sofa bed and a convertible sofa is that the convertible doesn't have a mattress. Convertible sofas just convert or join its cushions or couch pillows to make it a bed. A smaller and more simpler sleeper sofa is a futon. It's just basically like a sandwich. The back of the sofa can fold and can be released to create a flat sleeping surface. A futon also usually has a tough design. The last sofa type that Mandela Foam has is the recliner. Around 1850, one French person wanted a chair that can serve as a bed and a chaise lounge. So some tinkering here and there and poof! the recliner was made. Recliners are not ideal for living rooms because it's really a sofa that is straight form and function than design. I mean, look at this. They are best for family rooms and media rooms since it's great for watching movie. But of course, that doesn't mean you shouldn't put a recliner sofa in the living room. You can. Just minimize it into one or two, like an accent chair. For recliner sofas in groups like this, take it to the media room. There are a lot more sofa types that we haven't discussed because currently we don't have those designs here at Mandawa Foam like Chesterfield, the Cabriole, or the Sete, and a lot more. But maybe we will get to see these soon and take them home for our living room. So let's pray to the MF gods. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you learned a thing or two in this episode. And if you like more episodes like these, please, let us know. This is Bianca for MF Home TV, inspiring your home. Congratulations to last week's winner. Here's this week's prize.